Arduino, the word actually means a lot of things, but if we're talking about the hardware itself, an Arduino is a microcontroller surrounded by a bunch of other components that that microcontroller needs to function. And then Arduino, more broadly, is the sort of ecosystem and the software and the community and all, all the things that go into making it um, what it is and, and how it's become so popular. We're going to do a sort of guided tour of the Arduino Uno board, which is the board that most people, I guess, start with the Arduino. It's the simplest, I guess, in that it, it hasn't got any extra cruft that a lot of the more advanced boards have, um, but it has uh, some features on it that make it easier for the user that the really tiny, cheaper Arduinos don't. It's the one that you get in a lot of the, the starter kits when you buy like a kit with an Arduino and resistors and capacitors and things. Probably tends to come with Nuno. The heart of it is this chip here. This is a Atmel. Atmel are the company who actually manufactured the chip. The part number is 80 mega 328p. So that's the device that your code runs on. And it's a fairly standard microcontroller. And what the Arduino board does is bring um, the pins of that micro microcontroller out to these edge connectors so that you can use those pins um, in your software and your projects. So we've got analog inputs. One of the features of this microcontroller is that it can read analog voltages between zero and five volts, turn it into a number in your code that you can then do maths with. You might have a temperature sensor that where voltage output is relative to temperature. You can turn that into a number, do some maths and get the actual temperature out and then turn a fan on or turn a heater on or something like that. Along this side we've got the digital inputs and outputs. So perhaps that's more familiar. That's just a pin is either on or off, one or zero. Some of the pins have got this little tilde wavy line symbol, that means they can output. In Arduino it's called analog write, it's not actually, um, strictly speaking, analog. It doesn't vary continuously between zero and five volts. It just has sort of the same, same effect. It's called pulse width modulation. Um, maybe that's a topic for another video. <laughs> and then got some power pins and there's a reset, so you can reset the program from a remote source if, if you want to. And then IO ref is a, a sort of a reference voltage for the analog input. So it, ne it needs to know a base level to correctly convert the voltages on these pins into numbers. Most of the time, I think IOF is just left alone. Uh, for, certainly for most beginner projects, I don't think anyone touches IOF. This top left section of the board here is a power input. So when you're programming your Arduino, you're doing it through USB, and that also provides power. When you've actually finished and it's done in your project, you don't want to have to leave it connected to a computer all the time. So you can plug in 7 to 12 volts into this connector here, just a normal power supply. There's a chip here called a regulator. That turns your voltage input into the 5 volts that the Atmel chip needs. And then the rest of this is sort of support components for the power, so capacitors to, to perform smoothing. You've got a diode there to protect you from wiring and power the wrong way around. The silver device in the middle here is the oscillator, or the clock, for the chip. So just like your desktop or your laptop, you need a clock, the one your desktop or laptop will run in the gigahertz range of speeds. This is 16 megahertz, so it's pretty slow by comparison. One of the things that's made Arduino so popular and so ubiquitous and hobbyist world is that they put a USB connection on it. Normally microcontrollers of this kind, you need a special bit of programming hardware, which costs money. And then your computer needs the drivers to talk to that special bit of programming kit that you plug into this header here. It's called ICSP, In Circuit Serial Programming. That's a load of faff that um, users, beginners don't have to go through. So Arduino said, right, we're going we're to program it through USB. So that adds extra expense, mainly because this chip itself knows nothing about USB. It hasn't got any USB hardware on it. USB is quite a complicated protocol to implement. You need quite a lot of software and hardware embedded in a chip to do that. So this chip, um, being relatively cheap and simple, doesn't have that on, just talks normal old school serial data. So what they did is put this interface chip here. This chip talks USB to your computer and translates that into serial to talk to the Atmel chip there. So as far as the computer's concerned, it's talking to a USB device over serial. As far as the Arduino's concerned, it's talking serial. This is a bit of an aside. The early versions of Arduino used a dedicated USB to serial converter chip. And then at some point, Arduino went over to a using another microcontroller. So this chip here, just like this is a microcontroller in its own right, so is this one. It's there purely for the purpose of um, doing USB to serial conversion or serial to USB conversion. 
and I suspect Arduino did that because they wanted to put extra features into their communications um, to the Arduino that they couldn't do with a, a standard serial chip. Mainly for programming, so one of the things you have to do in Arduino when you're programming is in the Arduino IDE is go and select which Arduino is plugged in. You've got to select the serial port and then also as a separate operation select whether it's an Uno or a Dumilinove or a Nano or uh, whatever chip it is. Um, the, latest, the latest version of the Arduino IDE tries to um, auto configure that for you. So if you select the Arduino that's on COM port 9 it says, oh, I know that's a nano, and you don't have to go for the extra step, because that, that causes a lot of confusion for people, because they think they're compiling their code for a particular Arduino, and they're compiling it for another, and things start going wrong. You've got three LEDs. So TX and RX are the serial communication that we just talked about, so they flash when the Arduino is transmitting or receiving. And then this one is labelled L, and I don't know why that is, but it's attached to pin 13. So all of these digital pins, nothing is attached to them. So you're free to interface whatever you like to them. P13 is special, it has that LED on, and that's mainly so you've always got something on the board that you can see is working. So if you think it's all going wrong and you're not sure what's happening, you can go back to basics, write a, a, a program, a sketch, that just blinks the LED on pin 13. And at least if that works, then you know you haven't killed the, the chip, there's nothing wrong with the power, that kind of thing. So it's good for test purposes. Yeah, yeah. And finally, right in this top corner, there's also a, uh, a reset button, so you can... Um, Most important one on the board. <laughs> <laughs> so you can always reset your program. It can be useful if your program's got really locked up and everything's going horribly wrong and you want to reprogram it or just wipe it entirely. Sometimes it helps before programming if you hit reset. That gives the USB and serial a chance to kick this chip into programming mode so you can actually reprogram it. We're using pin 13, so we tell it 13 comma output, this should turn blue, which it does. And we close the brackets and put a semicolon in. 